So Henry Waxman, I expect to be completely annoyed about, right? It's, that's not, like, being annoyed about him is silly because you would expect to be annoyed. He's going to say stupid things, like Barney Frank. It's like, he's going to say something stupid. Now he says it. Something stupid was just said. You know, you can't get upset about it, right? But Tom Davis is on there, right? And he's the, the, uh, the other ranking member. And this is his quote. We have to remember that economics is not an objective science, but a political art. I almost, I almost got in an accident, right? <laughs> <clears throat> so, I, 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 you know, this is, I'm all worked up, okay? So, you know, my God, you know, the representative from the good state of Virginia uh, has forgotten that, uh, you know, he's in the home, right, Virginia, of the Virginia School, as, you know, the home of, of uh, you know, two Nobel Prize winners. There's only about five schools in the world that can claim that. You're getting your degree, you students, from that school that can claim that. So if anyone ever says to you, why didn't you go to Harvard, you can say, I'm in a place where there's two Nobel Prize winners. How about where you're at? You know, in economics, by the way, you know, like that. And so if you're at Chicago, they would laugh at you. But, you know, if, uh, you know, but, um, but you're pretty much, you know, you're right in there. So you can, you know, hassle these guys a little bit. So economics is not an objective science, but a political art. I want to counter that. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm, I, I decided not to do my original topic, which would have been a little bit more arcane, similar to the first time that I spoke for your group bumper, which I think I might have been still teaching at NYU at that time, and I came down here to do that. But um, so it's been a long time. Um, used to have the Sunday night, you know, Vienna Club or whatever, right? Um, but here's the basic line that I want to make: bad methodology. Don't get nervous. I'm not going to talk about epistemology and methodology, but bad methodology leads to bad analytics. Bad analytics, right, those are like your eyeglasses. That right now I see the world and it's all a, a blur for me. I put the eyeglasses on and it sharpens up. Okay? This is like my, ana my analytics. I'm able to now see and read the world better. In economics, that's what economics is. Here's economics. Here's the average Joe without economics. Henry Waxman. <laughs> right? He doesn't know what's going on. You put some glasses on him, all of a sudden now he's like, you know, can see the world, right? So bad methodology that generates bad sets of glasses isn't going to be able to help you see the world. But if you have good methodology which generates good analytics, those analytics will then give you good interpretations, and the good interpretations fuel good public policies. It's my contention that the reason why we had very few voices that were both sound, and, uh, and forceful in this latest debate on the economic side was precisely because we've had bad methodology generate bad analytics in economics for two generations. So unlike at the time in which at the Great Depression the voices that actually rose to challenge the government policies were, very, were, were there, but they just got beat out because of interest group arguments, now you didn't even have the voices. It coincides, for example, with the fact that we don't have a figure left anymore in the economics profession like a Milton Friedman. Um, though I, 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 part of my, for those of you who are in the, in, the, in the know, you know, part of my criticism of the credit crunch and all those things like that is an, is an attack on Milton Friedman. It's the, the difference between Friedman and the Keynesians is that Friedman, Hayek versus the Keynesians both see government as the source of the Great Depression rather than the cure. The Keynesians view the market as itself the cause of the Great Depression. But Friedman thought the reason was government didn't do something right. That's why we had the Great Depression. Whereas Hayek thought that government action itself. Okay? And so Hayek explains the 1920s. Friedman sort of explains the 1930s. But the problem, as Hayek pointed out, was that's a secondary depression effects in the 1930s. And another line that he and his, his, his good colleague and mentor, actually, Ludwig von Mises, used to say, trying to you know, cure uh, you know, one problem by having the government do another set of activities is like you know, driving over somebody 
and then saying, geez, I just drove over them, and then trying to back up over them to, like, stop the problem, which is what I would contend is going on right now. That's what the bailout's going to give you. They just ran over the financial sector. Now they're putting it in reverse and saying, let's see if we can undo that, and they're going to run right back over it, and in another 10 years, we're going to have a, have a conversation. So bad methodology generates bad analytics, bad in, bad. A analytics generates bad historical interpretations. Bad historical interpretations generate bad public policy. It's linear. It's not postmodern. Okay? Podiums exist, right? Economics makes real claims on the world. You're not going to run into a demand curve when you walk out of this room later. You know, it's not one you got to duck and get out of the way of. But the demand curves are very real. They're downward sloping. We don't pass a minimum wage law for $1,000 an hour minimum wage, right? If we cap CEO pay at no more than 10, 10 times that of the lowest, uh, you know, employee in the, in the firm, we're going to have really bad firms, all right, and not, not you know, these things. So economics is, is, is a science in the same, it's the it, it's same claim to truth as physics, but done through different set of procedures. And that's what leads to the sort of unique position in economics. Back to the Austrians. Now, a little bit of esotericness, all right? The Austrian School of Economics was founded, as many of you know, in the, in the late 19th century. They never called themselves Austrian economists. They just said, I'm doing good economics. But their critics are who called them Austrian economists, and the label stuck. Basic argument was that economics is a science just like the natural sciences, but the methods by which we come to, just, to do true knowledge are different methods and procedures. We are the study of man. We study what we are. That means that we are going to be different than sciences that study things that aren't what they are. We're studying rocks. Rock doesn't talk to me. Fritz Machlup, the great Austrian economist, summed this position up, if matter could talk. If when I was studying particles, the particles gave me an opinion about how they feel about things, okay? All right, so we are what we study, which means that our procedures and methods are in fact different from those areas which study things that aren't what they are. There's some distance. We, another phrase is we dwell within our subject which means that a lot of people like misunderstand and they think, okay, so then you can't get objective knowledge of that. So we have to have objective uh, procedures by which we're able to do that. And they are provided, by the way, this is just an Aristotelian point. The level of rigor that one adopts is appropriate for the subject in which you're studying. That's what disciplines do. That's what the discipline um, you know, focuses on. So the problem in, in, in this sense is that economics, or the logic of the economic way of thinking, stands between historicism, the idea that all I can know is what I record historically have ha has happened, and the natural sciences, the methods and procedures of the natural sciences. So we somehow stand between, so to be scientific, I have to ape what goes on in chemistry. And what economics does is it stands separate between those two things. It makes a claim that it's true across time and across cultures, but that the way I come to that knowledge is, is different. Where do I get that knowledge? The pure logic of choice. Since we know that we are what we study, we examine... The, um, the logic of individuals within context of choices, and we, and we study the systematic incentives that they face in making those choices. The knowledge within economics in this sense is the pure logic of choice, that is, we're going to arrange our means to obtain our ends in the most effective way possible, but the way we range our means to obtain our ends is going to be contextually determined. Recognizing this point about the contextual nature of human interaction is fundamental to understanding not only why some nations are rich and other nations are poor, I'll give you an example of that in a minute, but also why it is that we just are in the current financial situation that we're in. 
To say that the current financial situation is a consequence of greed 